number 13 Demon Street. I am condemned to live here, to suffer on this earth eternally, as a punishment for my sin. It is said that no greater outrage was ever committed by any mortal. But should I find a crime more heinous, my terrible punishment will end. Come with me and judge for yourself. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. She's gone. It was wonderful, Monsieur Arman, talking to her again. looking for? Hidden wires? Helen, those poor old people really believed they were talking to their daughter. Well, so they were. She's been dead for years. Not her spirit. She still lives in the world beyond, and we can talk to her through Monsieur Aramid. Isn't it wonderful? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Monsieur Aramid isn't about taking their badly needed money, I see. Well, he's certainly entitled to. Imagine. He knows all about the stars, and he can commune with the departed spirits, and he can even see into the future. So? Perhaps Madame would be interested in a reading? Yes, do it, Claire. I'm afraid not. Might one know the reason? I have no faith in it. Faith need not be blind. Perhaps I could make Madame see. I'm sure my husband wouldn't approve. Your husband? Dr. Robert Everett Standish. Surely you've heard of him. My husband is a surgeon, Monsieur Aramid. He doesn't hold with mysticism. And I, Madame, know nothing of medicine. <laughs> May we anticipate the pleasure of seeing you here again? I doubt it, monsieur. More the pity. May fortune smile upon you. Everett Standish, M.D., Neurosurgeon, Royal College of Surgeons. Wife, Claire Elizabeth, Chief Surgeon, St. Mary's Hospital, active in various philanthropic ventures. Inherited the Everett Standish fortune. Ah, we. Oui. It is revealed to me that we shall see you here again. Madame Robert Everett Standish. Double zero. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. No more bets. The wheel is turning. Thirteen black. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. 
And no more bets. The wheel is turning. Number seven, red. All right, Bernie, you got me in here. What do you want? A nice round number. 3,000 pounds. Even. Charlie. I told you I'd pay you as soon as I could. Not soon enough. All I need is a little time and a little luck. Here? <laughs> Your luck has run out, all of it. No, listen. I've just made contact with a new client. I've heard that before. No. But this one will pay, I swear. Who? The wife of Dr. Robert Everett Standish. Charlie. Loaded. I'll tell you what, Aramid. I'll give you two weeks. Two more weeks to start paying up. 100 pounds a week. If you can't, then you and I will have another little talk. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. That's all right, Aramis. And uh, call me Bernie. I feel the spirit presence here. Oh, so can I. Do not fight. Let them take possession of you. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel the spirit vibrations. Let them guide your hand. Oh, I feel the spirit presence leaving. Oh. May I look? There is a message for you. It will be written there. Well, there's something there, but I can't quite make it out. Oh, a message given by automatic writing must be understood. Well, it, it, it looks like a, a C, a C, and an E, S. Study it, madame. I shall be back. Yes. Remember, Aramid, Bernie says he wants his thousand pounds by Friday. And don't you forget but it. I can't... Bernie doesn't take excuses. Just a little friendly advice, chum. You'd better come up with the dough by the deadline, or you won't be needing money at all. We have ways of making things plenty rough on vultures like you. But you don't understand. Has it come to Madam yet? Well, it, it looks like Cessus. But what on earth does Cessus mean? Well, perhaps it is not a word. Ever since poor Albert passed away, he's never sent me a message like this. Oh, you mean single letters, like, like initials? Oh, it is possible. Well, mine are HVG, the V is for Victoria. And it couldn't be poor Albert, so who? Oh, I know, I know who it is. Claire. Claire Standish. Madam Standish? C-E-S. Her middle name is Elizabeth. Claire Elizabeth Standish. I did not know. But what on earth did the spirit vibrations make me write her initials for? Perhaps it is some message for her. Well, that must be it, I suppose. Have you spoken to her about coming back here again? Oh, I've tried. I've tried everything, but she hears nothing of it. Oh, the pity. She thinks I'm very foolish. And about this message you just received. I know I would try again, but she's forbidden me to talk about it. Absolutely forbidden. Oh, I must leave now. You see, Monsieur Aramid, it isn't like with me. Claire has no reason to talk to the spirit world. Bye.
Dr. Standish here. Yes. Yes, I understand. Of course. Right away. What is it? The hospital. Oh, darling, not again. I'm afraid so. Emergency. Oh. I'll make you a cup of tea. Call a taxi. No time for that. I take a taxi in Sloan Street. Oh. You go back to sleep, darling. I can't do it. I beg of you. Please, Helen, don't press me. Not now. Oh, Claire, I'll never forgive myself. If only I had come to you when I got that message, that awful accident might never have happened. You know I don't believe that. You have no reason to blame yourself. But don't you see? It might have been a warning. Robert had no faith in that sort of thing. Neither do I. I know. You think I'm foolish. But really, Claire, Monsieur Aramis says that the spirit world is urgently trying to contact you. I've heard it myself. Oh, Monsieur Aramis. You shouldn't underestimate him, Claire. Even Churchill believed in him. Oh, really, Helen? Oh, dear, what can I do to make you see? It might be awfully important, the spirit message I mean, perhaps from Robert. You wouldn't have to go to Seance right away. Just talk to him. Monsieur Aramit says it's all right to be an honest doubter if you don't close your mind. You might be shutting out the most vital thing in your whole life. All right, Helen. I'll go with you to talk to Monsieur Aramit. It takes great courage to face the unknown. Monsieur Aramit, I should be completely honest with you. I shall expect nothing else, madame. I came here only because I promised Mrs. Gardner. I see. I do not believe that you have special powers to make contact with departed spirits. As you wish. But there are forces in the world beyond trying to commune with you. You are intimating that my husband wants to communicate with me. Perhaps. He never believed in spirit communication when he was alive. Why should he now he is dead? A man may keep his eyes closed throughout his life. He may say to himself, surely if I open them, I will see nothing. But he will never know until he does open them. You must forgive me, Monsieur Aramis. But I cannot accept the fact that you are able to communicate with spirits. Nothing you have said has convinced me. Wait. There is a message for you from beyond. When the fruit of man's labor, meant to be high up, is underfoot, then you, the doubter, shall walk with regret upon hallowed ground. Good day, Monsieur Aramis. May fortune smile upon you. It's all right, ladies. You can't hurt it. Claire! You did it! Did what? What Aramis said you do. The fruit of man's labor underfoot. And a picture is certainly meant to be up high. And a grave is hallowed ground, you'll admit. And you didn't want to do it. You did it with regret. How can you doubt Aramis now?
you. Hear that, Charlie? Right the first time, and without a crystal bowl. <laughs> what now? You haven't forgotten, have you? Tonight's the night. In three hours, your time's up. All right, all right. Bernard thought it might be friendly to keep you company the last few hours. Kind of see that you didn't get yourself lost in the big wide world. And if you were thinking of the world beyond, me and Charlie would like to help you get there. My subject is coming here in less than an hour. You can't stay. And the money? I get my payment at midnight. You'll get yours then. All right, Master Murray. We'll be waiting. Down the alley. Presence is growing stronger. Stronger. Spirits are with us. Claire! Claire! If my husband is really here, I want to see him. The vibrations are strong, but materialization is difficult. Your husband's spirit is among us. Claire! I am here. It is difficult to maintain contact. I have important things to tell you. You must come again. Robert, if you are here, let me see you. We shall try materialization. But you must be very still. Hypoplasm is controlled through an etheric line. It may be broken by the slightest tremor or vibration in the ether. But stay, Monsieur Hermit. The connection line, it is broken. Can't you get it back? It is a great strain. Please. We shall make the attempt. I have not strength left to make the contact. Monsieur. Not now, dear. Monsieur Aramet is exhausted. We'll come again. Tomorrow? Well, I don't know. We'll have to ask him. He helps so many others. Well, he must stay with me and Robert. Just for a few days until I'm sure. Well, I don't know if he can. Well, if I pay him well, if I leave enough now to pay for everything, don't you think he'll do it? Perhaps. I'll leave him a hundred pounds, not two hundred. Then he'll do it, don't you think? Oh, Claire, I'm sure he will. We must leave now, Monsieur Aramit. We'll come back again, tomorrow. May fortune smile upon you. Almost midnight, chum. I have your money for you. Ectoplasm! I didn't mean to kill you! I didn't mean to kill you! No, no, go away! I didn't mean to kill you! I didn't mean to kill you! No! You saw him burn, he pulled a gun on us. Let's get out of here. 